Hi everybody, the Wichita Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, also known as WAMPO, needs your help to plan for future transportation projects in our area. It's all part of an effort called Move 2040. We'll get to that in just a minute, but first I'd like to introduce my two guests. We have Gloria Jeff down at the end, who is the principal planner for WAMPO, and also Tim Norton, who happens to be the WAMPO chair and a Sedgwick County Commissioner. Thank you both for being here. Well, we're glad to be here to tell our story. It's a wonderful opportunity. Why don't you guys start off by first just explaining to everybody what WAMPO is and what you guys do. Uh, I, I am chairman of the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization and it is for transportation. It's authorized by the federal government and created in metro areas of certain populations around the United States. Uh, we're a fully functional planning organization. We have staff, we have an expanded board that we've expanded recently of elected officials throughout the area that looks at federal government uh, funding, state funding, and local funding and try to use that funding in the best manager managed process that makes the most sense for our regional area. And Gloria, how big of an area is that? The Wichita metropolitan area includes all of the county of Sedgwick, portions of Butler and Sumner County, and some 22 cities within that boundary are also incorporated. Uh, we have a population of over 250,000 in that entire metropolitan area, which makes us what's called a transportation management area, which means the highest level of metropolitan planning organization that the federal government recognizes. And if you guys would talk a little bit about which areas this covers, is it just streets and highways? No, it'll, it'll talk about pathways, it'll talk about rail, uh, transit, uh, local transit, so it covers almost any kind of mobility. And, and then there's the offshoots of congestion management and some other things that we need to deal with. It's fair to say that it's a typical transportation organization. It's about moving people and about moving goods. And in this community, it's the lifeblood of our economy. When we look at who are our largest employers, they're transportation organizations, whether it's Cessna or Beach or Spirit, they're all transportation organizations. They depend on the presence of rail systems. They depend on the presence of solid roadways to move trucking, to get raw materials into their facilities, to get their employees to their facilities, as well as get their finished products out the door and delivered to their customers. That's a good point, and I'm sure that emphasizes the importance of what you guys are doing with Move 2040. Well, we, we have to be very serious about this work. There's limited funding from the feds and the state and even locally, so being very strategic with how we spend our money, not only for the economy, but for moving people and the safety of our people in the community is very important. Absolutely. Will you explain what Move 2040 is? Move 2040 is our 25-year uh, transportation plan for this metropolitan area. Transportation is primarily infrastructure, which means we do big projects uh, that last a long time. Uh, you don't build a roadway for a couple of years and then decide to move it somewhere else. So part of the reason for looking at it for 25 years is a recognition that it's important to look long term in, in, and figure out what makes the most sense. This community has turned a corner and has said what's important to us is having a clear vision of where we want to go in the future and making sure that we fund projects regardless of the mode that is in, whether it's public transportation or roadways, that we invest in a way that moves us toward the future we'd like to see. And transportation is a big part of that. The Move 2040 effort is the translation of the vision for the future for the Wichita metropolitan area, including the city of Wichita, the county of Sedgwick, and all of our member organizations, and translating that into an investment direction where they're saying we're going to fund these kinds of projects, whether it's at the level of WAMPO where we have dollars available from the federal government that we distribute, or it's local units of government making investments in their component of the transportation system to support that. Because at the end of the day, it's about a regional approach. It's about recognizing our codependency on one another, whether it's the city of Wichita being dependent upon workers that come here from Butler County, that come from Sumner County to work in our community and need to be able to get back and forth to the fact that we all care whether or not um, the manufacturing sites outside of the city of Wichita uh, are successful because it means our local economy will be successful. Um, another element of 
move 2040 is it creates a forum for discussion. We bring together people who would not normally talk to one another about issues into a central opportunity for discussion, whether it's about investing in a railroad spur to s encourage economic development in the community of Mays, or whether it's actually putting in the same room in the same place county commissioners from all three counties into a room with small citizen neighborhood organizations and talk about, well, we think transportation is important, but we've got this issue in our community and helping them all understand one another's point of view and reaching a shared decision about the direction that we take as opposed to, I represent Sedgwick County and that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Um, just to make sure I'm clear, so does this plan cover like repairs to existing infrastructure or is this new projects? It can be new projects, but it can be a revitalization of, of the transportation system that we currently have. Now, most of it will be new projects that will move us into the future, but repairing some old areas and revitalizing them becomes very important sometimes, too. Exactly. Um, it may not be new construction, but there'll be new projects in the context that we need to make major repairs on some portion of the roadway system or we need to invest new in vehicles for our public transportation system as they establish new routes so those will be new projects for those entities but they'll be building on protecting our current investment and our current infrastructure one of the interesting facts is the value of our transportation system in the wichita metropolitan area is almost eleven billion and that is with a b dollars that's not a trivial amount of investment to have been made in the past. And it's like your home. Do you really want to spend four or five hundred thousand dollars for your home and then not spend any money on fixing it up and keeping it, just buying new toys for the inside of it? I think most people will be shocked to hear that eleven billion dollar figure. That's quite huge. Yes. Well, and, and system-wide thinking is critically important when you have that kind of investment. So it is about the system. It's about roads and bridges and transit and rail and air, all of those things that make up the kind of intermodal system of transportation in our community. And there is not enough dollars to repair everything that uh, needs repair and build onto the system for the future. So. Uh, wise decision making, looking at the data, understanding our community becomes critical and planning is the way to do that and we hope Move 2040 will get us to that exact perfect plan with good input and scrutiny from uh, public officials on the board hopefully we'll get to where we want to be. That was one thing I was going to ask, what kind of shape are we in? Well, there are de deficient roads, and uh, the city of Wichita will work on theirs, the small cities will work on theirs, the counties will work on theirs, and, and truthfully, uh, I don't know that there's enough money to repair everything and never build anything new again. So you have to look into the out years mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. sure that you understand where you're strategically putting your dollars to make sure that the system for 2040 is going to be as good as it can possibly be taking care of the infrastructure we have today, but looking forward to what will supplement that and make it even better for the future. Is that a common scenario playing out throughout the country? Or are we unique in being in that situation? Well, I think Gloria probably knows that better than I do because she's been around in, in various states and worked with transportation for her whole life. And I think that's maybe she has a better comment on that than I do. I think it's fair to say that our circumstance is not unique the country as a whole has been under investing in transportation for a couple of decades. The challenge that we have today in the Wichita metropolitan area is that those roadways, for example, that receive federal and state money, 70% of them are in very good or good condition. That's basically an A or B if one thinks of an A through E rating system. Unfortunately, when we look at our local roadway system, we don't have those kinds of numbers and so the question becomes how do we balance making sure that those heavily utilized routes that receive federal and state money stay in good condition you know B B minus as opposed to and at the same time using those dollars that we would have spent there to make sure that the residential streets where many of our citizens have their homes and their residences are also maintained in a fashion um, an example being there are city streets in the city of Wichita that are still dirt roads that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are 
communities, some of the smaller communities, have those same kinds of challenges where they need to upgrade their local roadway system. It all comes out of the same pot of money in terms of local dollars. So how do we balance that is the challenge. But nationally, we aren't unique. As a matter of fact, we're in better shape than other parts in some parts of the country. But having said that, is there work for us to do? Absolutely. Are there areas that we need to target investment and do better? Absolutely. So how fierce is the competition then for those federal dollars? There are, the competition is tremendous. The Highway Trust Fund is distributed by formula, a formula that Congress sets every time they reauthorize transportation um, uh, spending. And they do that, traditionally they've done it in four to six year increments. The last three to four years they've been doing it in 30, 60, and 90 day increments, which doesn't make anybody happy. Uh, what we are, and that formula distribution is actually done very well for Kansas because Kansas is one of the few states in the nation where you actually get back more money from Washington than you send to Washington. So for every dollar that you send to Washington, you actually get um, somewhere in the neighborhood of a dollar to a dollar fourteen back. So in that context, we're in great shape. But it's a little bit skewed as well because as I've been reminded by my friends in Washington on a number of occasions. Since they have been pulling money out of the general fund to keep the trust fund from going bankrupt, everybody gets more than they send because it's not just the fuel tax that we get reimbursed on, it's the general tax monies as well. Mm -hmm. um, so as you guys are trying to figure out how to prioritize and be strategic with this plan, um, do you know at this point which specific proposals you might be looking at or certain projects? Well, we've got a maybe a very broad idea of projects that we might want to look at, but I think we need citizen input first as to what their priorities. Is transit more important than pathways and walkability and livability and, and complete streets? Or is major thoroughfares and roadways more important? Or is rail starting to become important in our community? Some passenger rail or more freight movement. So. Uh, we need to hear the public's viewpoint of that. We've got some very experienced staff that understands what maybe they think the plan should look like. We've got a, a broad base of elected officials locally that will have their viewpoint. We have a project advisory committee that will look at the individual product, uh, projects and try to rank them. But we need to start out by looking into the community and getting some feedback of what they think we should spend the money on. And you guys recently just launched some public engagement meetings, right? We have a four-phase process. Okay. And um, we like to think of it as an aircraft flight. And before we left the ground, we were asking for directions. Uh, we were asking the public, what do you want? How do you feel about your transportation system? Are you satisfied with it? What do you use it, utilize it for? We went to the public at large. We went to subject matter experts. We went to the goods movement community. We went to groups that represent traditionally underrepresented or traditionally not represented at the table groups as well. And we also then did a technical analysis of the transportation system to see where our strengths were, where were there opportunities for improvement, and where there are areas that we just weren't doing a good job at all. We finished up that phase of the process. Um, we conducted a workshop with elected officials from the metropolitan area and asked them to develop what we call investment strategies. What's that picture for the future? And we have four very broad investment strategies that we're looking at at the moment. One has to do with fixing bottlenecks. We have locations in the community where the system works as a whole works pretty well, but there are places where people have to slow down. I joke with some people, yeah, we finally slow you down to the posted speed limit, but there are places where uh, traffic does not move as smoothly as it should. There's a second one that we're looking at that says we really need to protect the investment that we have right now. And so the focus there is maintaining and investing in the current system that's in place now. There's a third option that we're looking at that says we need to focus on making sure that people have a variety of choices because that's one of the things we heard very loud and clear in our first round of public engagement is that people want to have more than choices. Yes, 90% of us will get in our cars and go wherever we want to go, but we also want to have the option of being able to live a healthier life so if we can ride our bike or walk to locations, we'd like to be able to do that. We'd like to be able to make sure that as our population gets older, as a baby boomer, I know what it feels like 
you know, time is marching on, and there are a lot of baby boomers in this community, and they're not moving to Florida, they're not moving to Arizona, they're staying right here. So as they get older, 25 years from now, they're going to be in their 80s and older. And so will they, one, want to drive everywhere, but they want to have full lives. So what are the options that are going to be available for them when they reach those older ages? So there's a third option that focuses on what do we do about making sure that we give people lots of choices. And then the fourth one focuses on the fact that we do have an aging population. Their needs are going to be different. We are also focusing on the fact that our young people who are in high school today are going to be the folks who are going to be making decisions in 25 years. So we need to bring them into the process as well. If current trends continue, we know we're going to have an environmental challenge in terms of being a non-attainment area for air quality and that'll have some real impacts on the community. So how do we plan for that and what does that future transportation system look like? Those are sort of the four that our elected officials have identified as ones that they want to hear about. And we're going to take that out to the public over the next six to eight weeks and ask them, which one of these do you like? Do you have a preference for? Do you have a better idea than these four about what it ought to look like? And we'll take that back to our advisory committee and they'll um, consider that input. We'll also talk to other elected officials who aren't on our policy body and ask them what they'd like to see. And then we're going to go to subject matter experts. Our freight community here is vitally important. We move a lot of goods and, and, and manufactured product in this metropolitan area. We have an awful lot of agribusiness in this community as well. And so it becomes important that we make sure that we invest in a way so that farmers can get their finished products to the granaries or to market for sale. In the same way, we've got to make sure that our aircraft manufacturers are able to do that and that employees can get to and from their places of work at a variety of choices. Seems like it touches a lot of lives in a lot of different ways. Uh, the military has an expression that I love, nothing happens until it moves. <laughs> Very true. Um, along those lines, will you guys talk just a little bit more about what's at stake and why it's so critical we get this right? Well, I think it's it's the future. I think so many things that happen in our community happen because of really good infrastructure. And if you think about uh, just the logistics of putting together uh, a transportation system, it becomes the lifeblood of your community. People being able to move around, have an economy that moves goods in and out. And uh, if we don't get it right, we could find ourselves in the year 2040 with a collapsed system, with an old system, and we'll have made some bad decisions. And don't we all go to cities and drive through them and look at it and go, who, who designed this? Who made, what, what were they thinking when they did this in their downtown or they did this out on the fringe? And boy, this doesn't work very well and I, you know, I don't understand it. And we don't want to have that in our community. Uh, I think we've all hit those places mm -hmm. <laughs> where we've mm -hmm. gone, wow, this is terrible. I, you mm -hmm. know, I'm scared to drive through here. And it's, it just doesn't function very well for either the people that live there or for the, the businesses that operate there. So we want to get it right for 2040. Mm -hmm. And the more data and the more input we can get, the better off we're going to be in designing that. I think it's also important from the standpoint that transportation is the lifeblood of any community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sort of jokingly talked about nothing happens to it moves, but the reality is that's absolutely true. A solid transportation system means that there is a good economic level of activity in that community, that there's a good quality of life because you've given people choices. The reason we've got to get it right is there are going to be fewer resources. This isn't the 1960s where we have more money than we knew what to do with. We are looking at an era where government has fewer dollars. The private sector is looking to maximize its return on investment. We've got to make good decisions because our citizens hold us accountable. The reality is, is that simply because we have money and spend it on projects isn't going to be good enough. The citizens want to know, what did that do for me? And it can't be enough to say, well, we got all the eligible for federal monies. They want to know, did that make my life better? Did it create an opportunity for me or my family members to have employment? Did it mean that I have an opportunity for a better quality of life? Did, you know, for teenagers it means was I able to get out to my Saturday afternoon um, activity and I'll just smile and leave it up to teenagers to decide how they define that. <laughs> but the reality is it, it touches everybody's life and if we don't make good decisions then they have every right to hold us accountable for not having given them the best that we can. Mm -hmm. They expect it of us and we owe it to them. 
Could you guys talk to me a little bit more about the funding? Um, you mentioned local, state, and federal dollars are involved, but how much money are we talking about? Um, if you could just explain a little bit more. Well, once again, Gloria may know that figure better than I do, but it's millions of dollars when you add it all together. And uh, it, it is it's quite hard to decide where those dollars should be spent without a lot of data and a lot of input. So we're working on that. But it is millions of dollars that will eventually become, come to our metro area through the different budget cycles. This community is spending in the neighborhood, and just in terms of local dollars, about $149 million a year to support transportation infrastructure, either in terms of constructing new roadways, repairing existing uh, roadways, or in some way investing in technology to support transportation. And that's not an insignificant amount. Unfortunately, we probably need to be spending about 12 to 15 percent more on an annual basis simply to maintain what we have now. If we want to expand our capacity, if we want to really utilize technologies at newer levels, we need to be investing significantly more than that. So when one looks at the numbers, like I said, we have a system that, that is worth almost 11 billion dollars a year. We're spending about 10 percent of that on an annual basis. I'm sorry, did I say 10? I meant 1 percent of that on an annual basis. Nobody spends 1 percent on maintaining their home on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that we're making good, we're, we're at least investing a, a set amount every year, but we need to do better. We need to figure out how to better leverage our federal dollars. And by the way, the federal government, even though we get more from them than we send, it's on an 80-20 split for every dollar that they give you to spend. You've got to go find, uh, I'm sorry, for every dollar that you have available, you have to find 20 cents of that 80. And oh, by the way, it's a reimbursement program. So you've got to have at least the first three or four payment cycles in-house before the federal government cycles in and begins to provide you with the other 80 percent. So we have to find 20 percent local match. So even if we want more federal dollars, we still have to look at our local resources and go, where are we going to get the match from? And that's not easy, as you well know. <laughs> well, it's a very complicated uh, system, and you have to have great partnerships with the state because they control a lot of the flow of the federal dollars and the projects. And so we can do our work perfectly and then still have to deal with congestion management and air quality and, and how the flow goes through, throughout the state. And they do the project advising committees too and charrettes to try to figure out where to put the state dollars. So it's, it's a competition and very complicated to get the money for our metropolitan area. And Gloria, when you were mentioning the community earlier, you weren't talking just Wichita area. You were talking about the whole coverage area for Wampo, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. It is all of Sedgwick County and the portions of Butler and Sumner County that are part of the Wichita metropolitan area. So it's not just the city of Wichita or just the county of Sedgwick. Um, the metropolitan area is well served by the presence of a transportation planning organization because we bring together that regional perspective so that it isn't just the county of Sedgwick sitting in a corner and deciding what's best for the county of Sedgwick or the city of Wichita or the city of Andover or the city of Mulvane or the city of um, uh, Kichai. It is literally putting everybody into a, a, a room together and talking about how do we move forward together recognizing that each community has its own set of fundamental issues but recognizing that transportation systems don't end at, at governmentally defined boundaries. Mm -hmm. The reality is folks who live in um, Park City work in Mulvane. We have folks who um, live in Andover and work in Goodell. So it really does, or Goddard, I'm sorry, um, it really does depend on where they want to work, where they want to recreate, and you've got to be able to connect them. Mm -hmm. um, so how can people get involved? They can come to the community meetings, or are there any other ways that they can engage? Well, certainly they can log on, log on to our website and, and give input through the website. Uh, I think it's www.wampo.org. Yep and we would encourage them to do that. They can get a lot of information about WAMPO and MOVE 2040 and the process. And I think all the engagement process will be posted on there. 
and I'm not sure, can they give feedback right on the website? They can give feedback right on the website. We also have a Facebook account. That's popular. <laughs> Very popular, so they have an opportunity mm -hmm. to touch base in then. And again, the website is www.wampo.org. Um, in addition, uh, they can call us here um, at um, 316-352-4854 and um, be able to get someone to respond there. But again, we're on um, the World Wide Web, we have a Facebook account, and we have a constant, con constant contact account as well, so please don't hesitate. If all else fails, pick up the phone, drop a note, or say, you know what, I care about transportation. I'm going to go to that meeting and we'll have the meetings posted on our website. Go to that meeting and chew off our ear and tell us what you think, because we want to hear. We want to make sure that our plan reflects where the, this community wants to go in the future. Last thing that I was going to ask you is if you could kind of give us a general timeline about how this plays out, what decisions will be made. Well, we'll go through the summer really working hard on getting information and data and then after that the project advisory committee will start doing some of their work and from there I, I'll let Gloria kind of finish up the last of the timeline. <laughs> okay, four phase process. First phase was um, asking for directions. We wrapped that up really and truly about the middle of March of 2014. Our second phase is mapping the route which will probably take us through the end of October of 2014. The third phase is coming in for um, a landing and we end, and that's when we'll have a draft plan out on the street and ready for folks to comment on. We expect to have that activity completed by July of 2015. And then our final phase is, of course, when you land a plane, you taxi it to the end and you run through your check down list to make sure that you've got everything straight and we'll include a monitoring and reporting back to the public phase and that'll be wrapped up in September of 2015. But we expect to be out on the street in the next six to eight weeks as part of our phase two evaluation, uh, phase two activities to ask folks, here are those suggested investment strategies, here's our suggested set of goal statements and our vision, are these what you want in the future, is there something different and how do we move it forward? And then the WAMPO board gives final approval to the plan? They do, but we have a, a, a couple of intermediate groups in there, the Technical Advisory Committee and the Project Advisory Committee that are separate from the Transportation Policy Body that do a lot of the heavy lifting with staff to really analyze the data at a very deep level to bring recommendations back to the policy body. The policy body will be involved in so much of the dialogue but really try to stay at the 40,000 foot viewpoint of making the final decision and let the different organizations underneath really do a lot of the detailed work to get us to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you guys wanted to add before we go? Thank you for the opportunity. And as uh, Dave Spears, our public works director on the county side sa says, infrastructure is the mother's milk of economic development so getting this right is important to the economy which is really important to every citizen in in the metro area as the economy goes it, it helps lifestyles it helps so many things in our community and transportation is a critical part of that absolutely well thank you both i know you're extremely busy and we appreciate all the hard work you're doing on this whole plan and this effort thank you lord yell for having us thank you and thank you for watching. We encourage you to check out the WAMPO website and get involved with MOVE 2040.